Hey, yo, what's up everyone and welcome back to Everything is Relationship. Um, this is the recap of the L Word Generation Q episode 5. I'm actually going to take a different approach on this one. Um, instead of just giving my recap and simply just giving you thoughts about the direction that they're taking the show, um, I'm going to give you some important lessons um, in communication that we can learn from episode five. So if I had to title this video, the title would be Communication or Bust. So lesson number one is begin to tell the truth to yourself and others. And I'm actually going to use Finley and Rebecca for the example on this particular lesson. So on the last episode, Finley was so trash that she didn't even realize that she told Rebecca that she wasn't a real priest. Now, I could definitely write a whole like blog and do another video on why you don't drunk text and or share your feelings over text, but I'll save that for another time. Um, the, but the big lesson in communication here um, is that Rebecca just flat out tells her that she needs to be with someone that is her equal and that she you know, didn't know who hurt her, but she has so much stuff that she has to figure out and that she needed to, to get her shit together. So after Rebecca said that, of course, you know, like everyone else, Finley denied that anybody hurt her and that she had things that she had to deal with. So we, everyone, we really have to start telling the truth to ourselves. It's okay to not be okay. It's okay to be hurt. It's okay to have trauma. Um, it's okay to have like family issues. Where we mess up is and run into more problems is that we try to cover them up. We try to get with someone that'll either fix us without us even really knowing it or we run away from dealing with that and we um, try to go out and we try to fix other people. And so what that does, it puts us in a place where we don't tell the truth to anybody and then when we do, when we finally get to that point, they think that we're cruel. So, you know, there is definitely a fine line between like controlling people and telling people what's right and what's wrong versus telling people what's true for you. Um, I think Rebecca definitely could have done what she did with that guy and held on to Finley and lied to her, lied to her and lied to Finley um, and would hope that one day that she would be better, but they both would have suffered. So, I mean, if you think about it, like how many relationships have you had that you knew that you shouldn't be in them, but you stayed in them anyway for whatever reason, but underneath it all, you were just lying to yourself and you were lying to the other person. I think when we stop letting our pride get in the way and, and you know, failure in relationships is like a huge thing and no one ever wants to fail in a relationship. But I think once we stop letting our pride get in the way and, and met, you know, or to ourselves and tell the truth to ourselves a little bit more, there will be less heartache. And so, you know, I challenge you to think like, what are you lying about? What are you hiding like from your partner, even from your parents, from your siblings? Like, what are you withholding from people? that you know has you go out and drink and do drugs or whatever and really numb yourself because that's all Finley's doing um and I think it's great that they took the storyline that way because I think there are a lot of people out there that are suffering and instead of dealing with their problems and talking about it and really seeking out the truth they're just trying to numb themselves with things of the world So lesson number two is set communication guidelines before you get into a serious relationship. And I'm going to use Danny and Sophie as the example for this one. So they obviously have a lot of things that they have to do with in regards to the wedding. But, you know, Danny's dad and what he's doing is throwing more issues and turmoil on top of that. And so a communication in their relationship is very important. Like, and it's clear that they have actually not set any guidelines and like how they are going to communicate um, these issues with one another because Sophie obviously seems like the type of person who wants to talk about it right now and Danny obviously needs processing time. 
Now, if you're sitting here and you're thinking, like, I'm, you know, the one who has to talk about it and my partner's the one that needs processing time, like, don't freak out. Um, I've been in both of those relationships. I'm currently in a relationship like that now. Um, but in talking to a lot of people, um, a lot of people think that Danny is running away from Sophie. But here's the thing. Sophie really has to look inside herself and, like, what has her be insecure every time Danny asks for some processing time? Or what has her be insecure and think that Danny's running away every time that she doesn't like immediately talk to her about something like everyone is different in their communication um you know I had to learn that I had to learn that not everyone grew up in an outspoken family like me not everyone grew up in a place where they could you know talk about whatever it is that they need to talk about so you know, in, in Danny's defense, um, I think that Sophie has some things that she actually has to look at. So when I talk about setting communication guidelines, this is what I mean. Like my girlfriend is the type of person who needs processing time. I'm the one who's like, we got to talk about it right away. I actually give her that processing time, but I request that we do talk about it. We don't withhold from one another. Like we really do have conversations. There is no such thing as ignoring things. It's especially big topics. There's no such thing as ignoring things like in, um, in our relationship. Now, another mini lesson is in this is that um, people will end a relationship because the communication styles are not the same. And let me tell you, if someone is telling you that you should end a relationship or you end a relationship because of that, you have some things that you have to look at because this is not a reason to end a relationship. So people want to take all of the effort out of their relationship. And a relationship takes effort, especially after you get out of that whole like honeymoon phase. Like you really have to work on your relationship day in and day out. So if people are telling you that you need to dump someone because you don't have the same communication style, they're just setting you up for failure and you're actually not learning how to work on your relationships. So um, you know, I've actually dated someone that we've had the same communication style and we did nothing but butt heads because we we're so driven by our emotions that all we did was scream and yell at each other and we actually resolved nothing. And then I was in a relationship with someone who didn't want to talk about anything. That was a deal breaker for me. Like, that's not actually going to work. But there are ways that you can actually communicate and set up some guidelines um, about when and where and how that you need to talk about some things. So here are the like kind of things that you need to look at when you're setting these guidelines when you're going into a long-term relationship. Okay, so this is what you need to look at. You need to look at the how. Like, in what way are you going to um, communicate with each other? Like, what's the process? Um, You know, there's um, a guy, he's a divorce lawyer, and he created this thing um, where, you know, you may email, like, in the in the um, morning or the afternoon, the issue that you have with your partner, and then you guys talk about it um, at night. Um, you also need to talk about the when. There are certain times of day where... Or there are certain times of day where it's better to have the conversation. I don't have conversations at night because I have a really bad issue with like sleeping. And I would stay up all night um, thinking over and over and over in my head like all of the issues and problems. So I actually don't like to have conversations um, later on at night. Um, You need to talk about the where. If you have... um, a house where one room is warmer than the rest of the house don't have any type of intense conversations in that room and I know that sounds really weird but if you think about like if it's already hot in that room and then there's you're generating heat because your emotions are going then the conversation is probably not gonna go that well so you get to look at the type of room might not want to have the conversation like in the bedroom where you two are sleeping so you want to look at the where you also finally want to at the what like after all of the emotion is gone like what's the underlining thing like clearly there was something with Sophie about like her like being upset that Danny wasn't talking at that time but like she just thinks that Danny's running away from her and Danny's not talking to her and she's gonna make all these decisions like she's basically just thinking that she's going at this thing alone by herself and she's not included so that's like the real issue there and so that's a conversation they should be having so you want to get down to the what like what's the big thing um that is causing this turmoil between you two and that's the thing you want to have a conversation about All right, so let's move on to lesson number three, which is anything is possible with communication. And we're going to use my favorite throuple of all time, Alice, Nat, and Gigi, for this example. So 
in this day and age where the traditional aspects of gender and sexuality and relationships are being challenged, um, communication can actually get you any type of relationship that you want. So when we look at Gigi, Alice, and Nat, and they first had a conversation about the whole thruple action, Nat actually had a lot to say. Alice enjoyed it. Gigi enjoyed it. Nat in the beginning, you know, actually didn't. She had some things that she had to communicate to like Gigi. But when they all the emotions was out of it, they actually got to sit down and have a conversation about how the throuple would work. Like who would go to the kids' meets? Who would make the snacks? Like what would happen on red carpet events? And at the end of the episode, they actually ended up all three going out together and all three holding hands, even with some skeptic looks from Bet and Shane. So when you can communicate about what you want in a relationship openly without necessarily worrying about whether people would judge you or not, which, you know, I think that's hard to do in this day and age, um, you can get anything that you want. So people think that relationships are hard and relationships are difficult and so polyamory and throuples actually make it harder, but studies have shown that these people um, are finding it easier to have these types of relationships because of the level of communication that they have to have. Have. A lot of the throuples have kids, so they do have to communicate and like whether they're going to tell the kids or not and what that looks like. So like communication is the key to getting everything that you want in a relationship, no matter what it looks like. But if you're afraid to like um, tell the truth, kind of like lesson number one, then you'll never get it. All right, let's go to the last lesson, um, lesson number four, which is any conversation can be fixed with another conversation. And we're going to use Micah and Jose for this one. All right, so Jose slipped up. He said, I love you. Um, and Micah called it an error, but, you know, I've been there. Um, I've slipped up and I've said I've learned I loved you too early or at the wrong time or whatever and it caused this whole awkward situation and I tell you it's the most uncomfortable thing ever and all you really do is you want to ignore it but as we can see they had another conversation where they were actually able to resolve um, what Micah said and they weren't like just spinning and wondering about it. So we as people, we really like to ignore things and hope that they'll just go away. Um, but when we do that, we sit and we wonder and we assume and we make up all of these stories in our head. But if you notice, when you actually go in and you have the conversation, it's never as bad as like you think it's going to be. So instead of Jose and Micah sitting and wondering in these like what ifs, right, and going down this spiral like rabbit hole um, of making things up, they you know, we're pre presented with a, you know, opportunity to have the conversation, no matter how awkward it was, about the I love you. And what that did was then allow Micah to open up about what he wanted sexually as someone who is trans and if they wanted to try it. So my advice on this one is talk, talk, and then talk some more. If you're early in your relationship, you should probably over communicate versus under communicate. So yeah, so those are all of my lessons in communication from episode five that I think we can learn. Um, listen, we live in a world where we are the most connected, but also the most dis disconnected because of technology. But what I know about the world is like anytime like you speak and you communicate, you literally can have anything that you want. You just have to get out of these little boxes and get out of the right and wrong and get out of all of and learn the things that society has um, told us to learn and do. Um, in order to do that and yeah it seems a little bit scary but trust me like the more you speak and the more you talk on it um the more you'll really begin to see the life that you want unfold Thank you again to everyone that has like liked and subscribed and viewed this video. Um, stay tuned for a second um, series that I'm going to do over the five love language. This is going to be more directed towards teens with a little LB LGBTQ um, spin on it, but you don't want to miss that. So, you know, share this video out with someone, um, you know, subscribe, be connected so you don't miss any of the notifications. And I love you guys so much. Thank you for all the support. Peace.